Greetings, humans, I'm Retrobot, and you are not. Ha ha hee ho ho. Here I go. Oh. Oh. Ouch. Pull me out. Oh boy, Retrobot. It's closing time. Lights out. I'll pull you out tomorrow. Hey, wait. Greetings once again, everyone. This is Retro Ernest of Retro Electrotech. And I have here on the bench today this Magnavox Micromatic Imperial Record Changer or Turntable. And it's from the 60s. And I performed an unboxing video and uh, some time back. Just uh, again, unboxing it and performing a preliminary evaluation, you know, getting an idea of what's what's going on and how everything looks. And I um, applied power to it and, you know, fired it up and I could hear some rubbing and the customer did uh, bring that to my attention. But really what the customer wants me to do is just uh, what we have already done, as you can see here, you can see all of the uh, parts, um, all uh, categorically bagged over there and you know like I always do get everything stripped down and uh, categorized and the parts have already been clean of you know you know cleaned of degraded lubricant and the customer uh, tried to do some uh, lubricating of some of these parts to try to get some noise out of the mechanism I believe and so forth and um, that didn't help but anyways um, we just cleaned everything off. We're starting with a clean slate is the point. You know, getting all the parts appropriately cleaned and appropriately re-lubricated. You know, where lubrication should be applied versus, you know, where it shouldn't be applied. Those are considerations, of course. So, in other words, to factory spec, you know, lubricate the uh, working surfaces that need to be lubricated and with the appropriate lubricant grease versus, um, you know, in the case of what I like to use, you know, a, a good fine machine oil, precision machine oil, something like a sewing machine oil even, like I said, light. And uh, something that doesn't have a tendency to get, uh, you know, sticky or gummy or whatever as it starts to degrade over time. Because, as I mentioned before, all lubricant will degrade over time. So, um, again, so I use a nice, uh, clean, light, um, precision machine oil, sewing machine type oil, or even like typewriter oil. Stuff that's um, seen use in uh, factories over the years, um, like sewing machine factories, and then you know how many um, how many offices were typewriters in back in the day, and uh, typewriter servicing was a huge business uh, back in the day, and you know this these are the things that uh, that industry or those industries use that proved themselves over time. So again, you know it's principle based, and uh, you don't have to get all hung up and all that over this lubricant and what some audiophile guy says you know you should use versus whatever just uh, understand the uh, principal operation of things the principal function of things and what type of lubricants are appropriate for that so forth and so on and then you can uh, figure it out from there without having to uh, go through all that all that craziness this is a public service message for technicians from mars mothers against reefer smoking Hello, my name is Tim the Technician. You may wonder why I'm smoking reefer. Why? It's because I suffer from post-traumatic recapping syndrome. My shrink Sheenatronic prescribed the reefer. And told me, Tim, I really didn't want to, but then I watched Reefer Madness, and now I wonder if I'm going mad. I feel paranoid, and I'm experiencing hallucinations. I really believe the capacitors are watching me. It's really freaking me out. Here they come. I better get out of sight. Peace.
Um, anyways, so moving on from there, so everything's going to be appropriately uh, lubricated when reinstalled, and of course I will go through and check um, for any defect, any uh, you know any parts that are prematurely worn or otherwise damaged, any broken teeth on gears, and just make sure all the levers uh, are straight and cams, and again gears, and everything is lining up like it should, and from there once all that is removed from the equation. Uh, as far as any potential problems brought on by, you know, mechanical defect or damage or whatever the case, then at that point, um, I can assure that all adjustments are, um, you know, where they should be, and nothing is again, uh, you know, in misalignment or whatever the case, and it's causing noise because I want to find out what that uh, rubbing noise was, and I'm pretty sure I know what it's associated with. Uh, during that preliminary evaluation video, I mentioned that this idler wheel, you know, you can hear it, it's as hard as, well, hard plastic. It's no longer uh, um, elastic in nature. Uh, this should be a pliable uh, rubber. You have this hard wheel um, rotating around, and that in and of itself will have a tendency to produce some uh, a rubbing noise sometimes because it doesn't have that softness anymore to it. Also, too, the surface gets really slick, and uh, you know you'll experience uh, slippage and speed issues and all that if your idler wheel is is uh, kaput. So I'm going to send that out to get re uh, re rubbered and all that. Um, like I said, all these parts are ready to reinstall, re lubricate, and um, once I get the new idler wheel back in and start testing that, and then I could go through little fine uh, mechanical adjustments, etc. So, this was more of uh, a customer update, like I said. Um, anybody who's followed along so far, uh, you know, aside from the customer, you're more than welcome to, as I always say, but I don't know if this content was all that interesting. Uh, but I just wanted to throw this out there for those interested, and, uh, you know, especially where, I, where I'm at on this project. And again, uh, I'll just say before I close this, yeah, everything's looking good so far. Uh, we didn't notice anything that uh, was real um, tweaked or... Uh, really really bad or otherwise damaged um, and I say we because I had my apprentice helping me out with this he uh, performed the disassembly under my supervision and anyways uh, guys uh, I'm just gonna leave it at this and um, when I flash back to this because I'm gonna cover this in a few more videos and then we'll do the final testing because this is a cool turntable and but um, when I flash back again in the next video because uh, I want to keep these videos a little bit shorter then everything will be uh, reinstalled and re-lubricated. I'm not going to show the detail that I did in the other Micromatic videos um, because, well, I already did it. So that's why I'm just going to flash to this pretty much assembled and, and a few little odds and ends and then go into the uh, uh, testing, like I said. So as I always say, uh, everyone, peace, love, music, and the vintage audio that brings it to your ears. Till next time. This is a poor man's shoe production.